In the world of finance and investing, one concept or tool that is widely used is the DCF, and this stands for the discounted cash flow. This is such a powerful concept and model because it allows you to find the real value of a particular company based on some specific assumptions. Once you know the real value of a company, then you can use that information to decide whether or not you want to invest in that particular company at the current stock price. The key to making a good DCF and finding the accurate value of a particular company are the assumptions because if you enter rubbish assumptions then you're gonna get a really bad number and that number is not going to help you to make a good investment decision. So in this video I'm gonna walk you through step by step on the basics of a DCF but most importantly we're gonna go through some of the main assumptions that you need to make to make a DCF effective and step by step you will see how each of these assumptions affects the underlying value of a particular company and just a heads up this template is available for free you can download it there's a link in the description and the cool thing about this template is that you can just change something like the company ticker you can see how the numbers right here are updating everything else updated right now and now we have a different intrinsic value Value for that particular company so this is the beauty of that template you can download it for free all you need to do is to have a white sheets account if you want to get the data automatically using the functions that you can see right here of course you can also just copy paste the numbers right here from any source that you want and the template would do the calculations just the same just keep that in mind okay so as you can see right here we have a very simple DCF and this is just to illustrate the point of what are the most most important assumptions of a DCF. So the main idea of a DCF is very simple. You basically, based on different assumptions, you're able to project the free cash flow of a particular company in the future. You can see how this is performed right here. And then based on that, we take those free cash flows and then we bring them back into the present to see how much those cash flows are worth right now based on a discount rate, otherwise known as the rate of return that we want to make as investors. In order for that process to happen, there are many different assumptions, some of it which you can see right here, but we're gonna go step by step through the most important ones. Okay, so in most cases, the most important DCF assumption that you have to really pay a lot of attention on is the terminal value. And the reason why is because the terminal value is essentially how much value you think the company would generate even after you sell that particular company. There are many different ways to calculate the terminal value of a company. The most commonly used method is the growth in perpetuity method, which basically states that imagine you sell a company and at that time is generating a cash flow of $100. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to try to project what the yearly growth of that free cash flow will be forever. So in this case we have a long-term growth rate of two percent so that basically means that every year you would take that hundred dollars and you would apply the growth rate which you can see right here so in order to do that you just do one plus the growth rate in this case we're gonna keep it locked in and in the first year it would go to 102 dollars then 104 0.4 and so on and so forth and so basically what this terminal value calculation is taking is this number is growing forever at two percent what is the actual value right now assuming that the free cash flow is going to grow at that rate forever so for that you need to apply the terminal value calculation uh, there's many different videos you can check out on this channel but here is the calculation itself and after you take that calculation you need to again apply the present value formula to that terminal value you can see the formula right here 
Now the key of course is this number right here which is highlighted and that is the long-term growth rate. So you really have to do a lot of research to determine effectively what that long-term growth rate is because depending on this answer, the value of the company will change significantly. So for example, right now it's at 2%. Let's say I move it up to 3%. So right now the intrinsic value of the company according to these assumptions which are just kind of double numbers so don't pay too much attention to them is 3.2 okay so now we're going to change it to 3 and see how it changes so as you can see i just changed it and now you see how it jumped quite a bit just one percent and all of a sudden we have like 400 billion i believe is the difference which is a massive massive difference obviously if i continue to do that and i put it at four percent which is just one percent more this is not gonna result in a one percent difference in value but in a huge difference now we're talking four trillion so that is a huge huge difference and this is why it is really important that you pay attention to this number. Now the next number or the next DCF assumption that is highly, highly critical is the WAC or the discount rate. So there's many different ways in which you can calculate the WAC or the discount rate. You can literally just think of how much of a return you want to earn for a particular investment. And the one thing you need to keep in mind is that the more risk an investment has, the more you should be compensated. So keep that in mind. In this case, to calculate the WAC, uh, I believe this template is using the, uh, the capitalized asset pricing model, which is very common. And we have a video on our channel that you can check out on this topic. But you can see the WAC makes a huge difference. So right now is based on this formula and this formula relies on the cost of debt, tax rate, and all this different stuff. But let's forget about this stuff. Let's focus on this number right here. If I increase the number, let's see how that leads to an increase or decrease in the intrinsic value. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put it at 10.5%. So as you can see, I just changed it to 10.5% to and that led to a big difference. In this case, the intrinsic value went down by quite a bit. We were at roughly 3.2, now we're at 2.8. So that is quite a big difference and this is why you need to really pay attention to the WAC. And as you can see, the relationship is such that the more you increase the WAC, the lower the intrinsic value of the company would be because that means that you're basically valuing the company less and less and you want to earn a higher return and then the opposite obviously applies if I lower this to 8.5 you will see before we were at 3.2 now what are we at now we're at 3.7 so that increased the value of the company quite a lot now the last key DCF assumption are what it's known as the revenue projections or the free cash flow projections and the cost projections this template is very simple you could break these projections and be as detailed as you pretty much want however in this case uh, it's quite simple so the numbers that we're looking at are the numbers that you can see right here in green in yellow and these are the assumptions that we're entering for the forecast the year so f stands for forecast a stands for the actual numbers of the company so in this case what we're saying is 60 percent is what we expect the revenues to grow and this is being applied in this formula right here of of course you can change this number to whatever you think is reasonable and this is where your research really comes into place for this what I recommend is that if possible that you look at it in terms of the company's uh, segment revenues so if I do something like this why is Apple If I do this formula, which you can see right here, I can get Apple segment revenues. And this tells you based on the different segments that the company has, such as Mac, service, iPhone, iPads, whatever, it gives you the revenues in the last year of Apple. So with this information, you can go ahead and use it and you can be even more detailed. So you can do consumer research, look at the reports and be like, okay, you know what? The smartphone market is projected to 
grow at a rate of 4% per year. So you could apply the 4% to the iPhone category if you think that Apple is going to reach the average market growth rate. If you think they're gonna do better than the market growth rate, you, then you can do something like 6%, 8%, or you could do lower as well. It is really up to you, but this is a really powerful way of looking at that information. And then of course, your goal is to aggregate all these different sources, what you expect in terms of growth for the next future years and then you can change the numbers right here so let's say based on my research i found it should be five percent here i expect three percent for whatever reason and then three percent and then maybe two percent and then maybe apple vision pro or there's some massive launch of a new technology for apple and now we're looking at seven percent so all these different numbers are really really critical because as you can see they all have an impact in the intrinsic value of the company the same applies for the cost as well in this case i don't believe we have any cost and uh, you can also perform this to the balance sheet items because they they ultimately impact the free cash flow of the company, which is what you are projecting right here on this section of the template. Now you know what the main DCF assumptions are and what they mean in terms of the actual intrinsic value of a particular company. So go ahead and use this information so that you can make some great investment decisions for yourself and for those people that you most care about. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification zone so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's gonna allow you to take your investing game to the next level.